G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as I and apparently my famous iron are gonna take you through my round eight tips. I did find this week particularly hard to tip actually, but after all, it's these sort of rounds that separate the men from the boys. And I most certainly consider myself a boy. Just a little quick announcement before we get started. True Footy, after a long hiatus, is back on Instagram. So if you use the platform a lot, make sure you throw us a follow on there to keep up uh, with our content in a bit of a different way. In particular, I'll be posting a lot of the player of the year stuff on there. But anyway, let's get straight into round eight. First up, we have the Sydney Swans hosting Essendon on Friday night at the SCG. This game in particular was pretty hard to tip, not least because the Bombers actually haven't won in Sydney since 2009. Currently, the Swans are sitting on the bottom of the ladder and are copping a lot of heat for their lacklustre start to the season. The Swans are coming off a streak of four pretty average losses and like a few other teams, it's probably a case of too much coming down to too few. The Bombers' last five games, on the other hand, include three beltings of fairly middle to average sides and then two losses at the hands of two contenders in the Pies and Geelong. That probably tells us a little bit about where they are at the moment. Good enough to be in the finals conversation, but not quite in that top echelon of teams. The Bombers do like to play pretty fast-breaking football, which, to be honest, the SCG isn't really conducive to. To be honest, it does make me a little bit hesitant to tip the Bombers here because of that reason. I think Sydney are really capable of choking their game style if they wanted to. Nonetheless, I'm going to tip the Bombers and they're going to win a thriller by two points. Next up, we have the Bulldogs hosting the Brisbane Lions in Ballarat at Mars Stadium. This, for me, is another hard game to tip. A couple of weeks ago, I would have said undeniably the Lions are the better side, but in the last two weeks, the Dogs have kind of impressed me with their loss in Perth to Fremantle. I thought they played pretty well. And then obviously they annihilated Richmond last week. Bontempelli in particular is absolutely firing in all cylinders as I'm sure you've seen he's leading our true footy player of the year comp. Norton, as I talked about in the last video, has really started to make a name for himself as an attacking option. Although I think with increased attention over the coming weeks, his influence will probably be reduced. And I think Brisbane are going to Harris Andrews back this week. It's still hard for me to get a real feel for where Brisbane sit in the pecking order. In the last two weeks, they beat up on some struggling sides. And then the two weeks before that, they had big losses against Essendon and Collingwood. The Lions haven't beaten the Doggies in Melbourne since 2014, and this being in Ballarat probably makes it a slightly harder trip for mine. I'm gonna back in the Doggies' recent form here and tip them in a thriller by seven points. Next up, we have Carlton and Collingwood at the MCG. This game, in theory, should be one of the easiest ones to tip, but generally, those are famous last words. The Blues have come under fire in the last two weeks for two really disappointing performances, most notably last week when they got belted by North Melbourne. Given the Roos were struggling themselves and really desperately needed a win, they roasted the occasion a lot better than Carlton did. That being said, I don't think it's a really big deal. I think the Blues last week had a bit of an anomaly. These performances do happen to young sides, and to be honest, that's, as I said in the last video, it's the first time they've really been bad this year. Now, last week, we know the Pies were too good for a power side that's in pretty good form, actually. Other than a blip in round three against the Eagles, the Pies have looked probably about as strong as we expected them to be in the preseason. It looks like Adams is set to miss a bit more football, but with the Collingwood midfield the way it is, I don't think they're going to miss him too much. And in particular, Trelaw and Pendlebury have been red hot this year. I'm not expecting any big upset in this game. I'm going to tip Collingwood to win by 42 points. The next game is the Gold Coast Suns hosting Melbourne at Metricon Stadium. Gold Coast have definitely proven they're no easy beats this year, and other than one or two exceptions, they've been pretty hard to beat in all of their games. The Eagles did threaten to blow the Suns out of the water last game with a big first half, but to the Suns' credit, they fought back and got within two goals in that last easy. quarter. They're an easy team to discredit given all the adversity that they've had in recent years, but to be fair, I'm actually really impressed with what Jews managed to achieve so far this year. They'll go into this clash with Melbourne full of belief that they can win, and rightfully so. The Demons have gradually looked more and more competitive as the year has gone on, and last week they had a big win over the Hawks, meaning there's a little bit less pressure on them now. With some renewed confidence, I expect them to take this opportunity to win their third game of the season. If they don't, I think it's safe to say that it's curtains for the year. These two sides are actually the lowest two teams for points for this season, meaning we're probably going to see a low-scoring tussle. Nonetheless, I'm going to tip the Demons to win this by 19 points. Next up, we have the Saints hosting the West Coast Eagles at Marvel. Stadium. Now the Saints have put together some pretty good football so far this year, but it's kind of come apart a little bit in the last two weeks. Now there's no shame to losing by seven goals to the Giants in Sydney, but the week before that they dropped another winnable game against the Crows at home. Admittedly, the Saints do have a lengthy injury list and Jack Stephen taking some time away from the game doesn't really help them in that regard. As for the Eagles, they've put together a really unconvincing month of footy. They were lucky to beat the Dockers, they got smashed by the Power and Geelong, and they limped over the line against the Suns last week. For them, it's really hard to diagnose exactly why they're not playing good football, because in round two and three, they look like world beaters. They actually pumped GWS and then beat Collingwood at the MCG. 
To be honest, that was as good as form as we saw from at any point last year. For them, it's just a matter of needing to bank the wins while they're playing poor football, and that's what I expect to happen on Saturday night. It'll be an average game, under 20 goals kicked in total, I reckon, but the Eagles will win this by 13 points. Next up, we have the highly anticipated SA showdown between Port and Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. This game is particularly interesting because these two sides kind of have their form lines intersecting. If you believe the form in the opening rounds, the Power looked like a top four Smokey and the Crows looked like they were going to struggle and miss the finals. I still think the Power will play finals, but it's the Crows that have kind of impressed and lifted with the last three games. Now the Power did get done fairly easily by Collingwood last week, which may dent their confidence, but to be honest, there's no real shame to losing to Collingwood in Melbourne. They have copped some bad injury luck though, to be honest, with Wines, Gray and Ebert all set to miss this game. That's going to be the tipping point for me, and I'm actually going to have to tip the Crows. I think Adelaide will win this by 16 points. Next up, we have North hosting Geelong at Marble Stadium. For the first time this season, the Roos lived up to their preseason expectations last week and belted Carlton at Marble. The Roos mids absolutely dined out on Carlton last week, and in particular, Dumont and Higgins actually had a day out. That being said, I don't know how much you can really take from that game because I think Carlton kind of rolled over for them. The Cats, on the other hand, overcame a pretty strong Essendon side and won by five goals in the end. The Cats are looking a bit like a well-oiled machine so far this year, which is a bit of an ominous sign for the rest of the competition. Adelaide, we all know, got off from suspension, which I think is the fair result, and he'll be available to play. If it's possible, Tim Kelly has actually taken his game to the next level this year, which I didn't expect from a second-year player. Often when someone has an epic first season, they stagnate a little bit, but not Tim Kelly. I reckon he's actually gotten better. I do think North are actually strangely capable of an upset, but I'm still going to have to tip Geelong and Geelong heavily. They're going to win by 58 points. The second last game of the round is Hawthorne hosting GWS at the MC. As we all know, last week the Hawks dropped a very winnable game against the Demons. It was a fairly lacklustre performance and we got to see what Hawthorne were like with O'Meara not having the same kind of impact he has in the past. After an unconvincing win the previous week against Carlton in Tasmania, the Hawks kind of look like they might be in a little bit of a slump. They've lost three of their last four and probably need to respond with a really strong performance this week. Unfortunately for them, they come up against a giant side that look along with Geelong and Collingwood, are cut above the rest of the competition. I'm making this video before the teams are actually announced, so I'm not sure if Lockie Whitfield or Josh Kelly are available, but the Giants are in an enviable position where they can actually cover these guys pretty well. I really struggled saying enviable then. With this game being at the MCG, of course you have to give Hawthorne a chance, but I think the Giants are going to win this and they're going to win by 21 points. The last game of the round is in Perth and it's Fremantle hosting Richmond at Optus Stadium. Last week the Dockers flexed their defensive prowess yet again and conceded just seven goals against Adelaide in Adelaide. The downside to that being of course that they only kicked five goals themselves. Nonetheless, I did think it was actually a fairly entertaining game and it's evident to me that the Dockers have gone up a notch this year. Their backline worked really effectively with Pierce, Hamling and Luke Ryan leading the way and their midfield leaders in Fife and Monday have been good all year. Probably what's lacking for them is connection between the midfield and the forward line. I think they've got the personnel there, it's just not quite clicking yet and they're still struggling for scoring power. This week may be tough for them because they come up against another strong defensive side in Richmond. Now the Tigers, as we know, copped a walloping last week against the Bulldogs and they paid the price for just not showing up to the game. Yes, they are undermanned, but we've seen what they can produce when they actually show up ready for a fight. Now their exposed form at Optus Stadium is fairly limited. They've played there just once and got walloped by the Eagles who went on to win the Premiership. Ordinarily, I think I would have tipped Richmond, but I'm not convinced that their slumps are going to last just one game. I'm going to predict yet another low scoring game for the round and say Fremantle win by 23 points, but I have to say, this is the result I'm least confident about. All right, guys, thanks once again for tuning into my weekly tip show. Let me know, as usual, in the comments whether you agree or disagree with me. Also, one thing I like from you guys is to comment below which game that doesn't involve the team you support are you most interested to watch this week and why. One other thing, guys, is I probably won't be able to do my True Footy Reacts video next week as things are just really ramping up at work and uni. So I'll still be here to do the footy tips, but probably no reaction video this week. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you you guys next week.